<laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for the thanks for thanks thanks for tuning in. I don't know if you say that, but why not? Uh, today we have like two special guests. I'll uh, let Paul introduce them. Uh, go for it. All right. Well, thanks, Fab. Thank you. Uh, thank you, James. Thank you, Wade, for being here. We have two special guests that are Wade and James from Sheldon James Villas. Uh, we'll find out more about their business. Uh, full disclosure, they are my uh, office mates here in, in uh, Point Claire Village. So I'm um, excited to have them on board. Uh, they have an interesting story. They have an interesting business. So without any further ado, um, guys, can I just ask you, one of you, fight it out. One of you tell us a little bit about your business and then we'll, we'll jump into the, uh, to the, the crux of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having us, Fab. Thanks, Paul. And uh, we do have a few noise complaints to bring up with you. Uh, <laughs> all that uh, music going on a few doors down, but uh, we'll get to that later. Wait, I'll let Wade uh, take uh, maybe a little bit of the intro on, uh, on the company. Sure. Sure. Thanks, James. Again, uh, double down on what James said. Appreciate you guys having us on. Uh, so how we came into the business, that's what just you're asking here, here Paul. Yeah, or well, tell us a little bit about your business first. So, you know, yeah. I know what it is. Fab knows what it is, but our listeners don't. So maybe tell us a little bit what the business is and then how you got into the business. Sure. So uh, we are a villa rental agency, a luxury villa rental agency specifically, uh, un unlike a lot of the other you know, companies out there that are, that are doing stuff that have sort of a wider range of you know, anything from low to mid to high end product. Our focus is primarily on the uh, the higher end side of things and, and the, the really the luxury market. It's it's a niche market that we're sort of trying to play in. And what we do is we offer uh, you know, luxury villa rentals for short term, uh, primarily, but we do long term as well. But primarily short term uh, vacation rentals across the world uh, and personalized experiences. So you're not just renting a home from us. We're we're holding your hand through the whole process of booking a chef you know getting you to and from the airport or your private jet or your private boat to the house and back afterwards for any excursions activities you want to do when you're there any services you want to have with spa therapist a butler a tennis instructor a private security anything you need it's a it's end to end full experience uh, as personalized as we can make it based on what you want uh and that's what we do in a nutshell and and so it's very interesting business um so I have two questions, but the first one is, what made you guys think that this business was a good business to get into? Like, how, how did you just wake up one day and say, hey, let's do this? Like, what was the impetus to say, you know, we think that people are going to really love having us help them find um, a luxury villa or anywhere around the world? You want me to take this one, James? Uh, yeah, sure. You can start. I think I add some more, more afterwards. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in our, in our previous life prior to starting Sheldon James, uh, James and I worked for, for another pretty well-known um, vacation rental uh, company and uh, for a long time. I and mean, we've, we've got, you know, 17 plus years in the business, in, in my case, almost 20. And James, same thing, you know, he's coming up on 17, 18 years in the business. So we're used to dealing with this industry and these folks and, and dealing with vacations and, and private travel and all that stuff. And that was just, that was just, a, it was a job we had initially when we started all those years ago and became a career over all that time. And it was something we found a passion for. Uh, so it's not like we just woke up one day and, and from our independent careers and said, let's start a business doing this. We were already in this industry. It was something we know and we, we grew to love uh, and, you know, not to sound arrogant, but I, th I think we were pretty damn good at our jobs in our previous life. And it's something that we took pride in and, and, James and I have, and our partners are, who are, happen to be our wives as well. We're all in, in this business together for a long time and are close friends outside of work. So in most of our conversations, you know how it is when you talk to people at work that are also friends outside of work, somehow it always ends up being that you're talking about work. Sure. And a lot of the questions and issues and conversations we would have were, were all centered around what we would like to do in the business and how we would like to see it go and this, that, and the other. And it's kind of hard to do that sometimes if you're working for, you know, a big company. Someone else, and, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so that that was kind of, I think, the the essence of why we decided to start this was we had an opportunity to, to do what we love, what we know, what we're good at, at and, you know, leverage all the experience and the contacts and the, the you know, the, the passion that we have for this industry and this business 
and turn it into something that we want it to be. Plain and simple. I mean, James, go ahead if you had something you want to add. Yeah, well, funny enough, too, like we came into this industry, the travel industry, um, you know, through our previous employer. Um, prior to that, uh, like I was in computer engineering, I studied computer computer engineering, but I always had this passion for travel. I ended up uh, taking a quick break from uh, my uh, like post studies. Uh, instead of doing computer programming, I decided to be a mascot on a cruise ship. Uh, then I went back, uh, went back into programming and I said, you know what, I, I, I got poached and said, you know, why don't you come try this travel job out? And honestly, I, I thought I would do it for a little bit. And then 14, 15 years later, I was still, uh, still at that company and I just loved it. I just loved travel. I know Wade had a, Wade was involved in music and different other industries, uh, prior to, uh, uh, prior to travel and. You know, once I think we got a taste for it, it was just it was just so much fun. And looking at the product that we were selling, which is, you know, high end homes and then, on you know, getting some guest feedback, you know, some of the experiences we were able to set up back then. It was just it was very fulfilling and it was just it was just really fun compared okay. to, uh, you know, programming C++ or Java and stuff like that. So it was uh, it was it was just a, a it was a really nice, nice change of pace interesting so it's interesting that you guys obviously felt okay we we got our experience here there's obviously room for one more than one player if you guys are, are in that that market with someone else and you did things differently which is very interesting what are the challenges that you're facing as okay we we have this knowledge we're starting our own company you know there's some other players in the market you know let's face it fab and i there's a lot of other players in market what we do so what are the challenges to differentiate yourself? So maybe in a, in a sales perspective or in a marketing perspective, what do you guys do to differentiate the Sheldon James Villa experience uh, from the competitors out there? Well, wait, if you're okay, I'll uh, start us. Yeah, start please, please. yeah, I mean, listen, I, we, we, we knew for a long time, um, you know, that, that we were pretty successful with, you know, the way we were dealing with our clients, uh, with our, our partners. And we always knew that they really appreciated, you know, the, the, the service we were able, able to deliver. I think one of the biggest challenges is, you know, none of us, the four of us, the four founding partners of Sheldon James, none of us started a company before. So while we're each great individually at what we were doing, you know, it was a challenge like, oh yeah, you know, there's more to it than just selling. There's more to it than just building the website. Paying your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, we have, we've got somebody for that. Thank goodness. But Hold so, on. I mean, it's, it's just been, you know, we were in a very, we were pretty a privileged situation where, you know, we were still working from home. Um, our kids are a little bit on the older side where they're at school. So we were able to devote a lot of time especially in the early stages, you know, last year to help build that process. But we were learning like with every week, there was always something that came up. We're like, oh yeah, we didn't think of that. We didn't think of that. It really is building this company has been more than just selling and, and, and making bookings because we also want to make sure that, you know, our, you know, it's our, it's our names attached to it. Literally. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we have a strong brand and that, People look back whenever they have every single trip with us. They, we want them to make sure, like, oh, yeah, you know what? That was amazing. We want to make mm -hmm. sure that they come back or, you know, tell their friends. So, you know, we're, 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 we're treading lightly as we, as we build this company because we just want to make sure that we, we remain client focused. And, and uh, Wade, you, have your hand, you had your hand up there before. Yeah, I was just going to say, we have to pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, I just want to, wanna, you know, sort of build on, on what James said. I think that has been the, the biggest challenge. I don't think any of us came into this, you know, thinking that we don't know how to handle this business per se, right? Because we've been doing it so long. We're very confident in what we do. Uh, you know, I think any good salesperson uh, from the sales side of thing, I mean, it's more than just sales building a company, but you know, it's a sales driven organization, Sheldon James. So I think any good salesperson has to have a little bit of, for lack of a better word, arrogance or cockiness. You have to believe in your ability to do it and be willing to make that known to anybody who wants to listen. Um, and so it was not a question of, can we do this business? It was more a question of, 
can we build a business, right? You told me to go sell something, like tell me what it is, I'll learn about it, I'll sell it. Building a company is, is everything behind that. The stuff you take for granted when you work for someone else, right? Like you, the, the taxes, you know, the finance, the finance team, the breakdown of paying your bills, receiving your, you know, setting up your programs, setting up your systems, uh, forecasting, budgeting, you know, this is all stuff that we've never done, like James said. So that was the biggest challenge, truly, I, I agree. And, and it still is a challenge if we're speaking openly here. It's something we're still learning. But, you know, I, I think, like I said, the confidence that we have in each other and, and in our experience and in our ability and the four of us, you know, to speak to speak more about sort of the other two founding partners in our, in, who are our wives, as I said, James's wife, Angela, uh, is is a product, um, product manager, right? So she, she's a genius with all the back-end systems and the building and the development. She doesn't do the actual dev herself, but she, without that aspect, you know, we'd kind of be dead in the water in terms of building a website. We know what we want stuff to look like. We don't have the first clue on how to get it from what's in here to what you're seeing on a website. That's her specialty, right? She's great at it. That's what she did for years. That's what she, she still does. Um, you know, my wife is, is on the finance side. She, she worked at, at the, the company we came from for the better part of 20 years. And she's done everything there from finance. She was on the finance team from the guest services to sales. So she's got such a broad background uh, and an experience in every facet of the business that that coupled with James's wife, Angela, coupled with the skills that James and I have in, in the sales and service side and dealing with the clients directly, the four of those things together gave us a, a really nice mix of like a little bit of the aspects of every aspect you need to build a business and, and the challenge was just filling in those gaps right and how to do it efficiently how to do it with the focus of the brand in mind like james said and how to do it without blowing the bank because you know your new business you don't know if you're going to be successful right off the bat if you're going to have to struggle um that those were the challenges is putting it all together but we were confident and, 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 they're, and they're still there right and yeah but those are good challenges right because that means yeah. on the sales side things are working well and and which brings me to my to, to, to the next question fab jump in anytime right fab's right yeah. i like to talk a lot and i hog the hog space um <laughs> How do you sell? How do you find your how do you find your people? Is it inbound? Is it outbound? Traditional? Are you guys putting ads in papers? <laughs> um, <laughs> or do you have guys with sandwich boards outside? I haven't seen any here. Um, you don't follow me on Facebook or Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us your 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 strategy to attract the people. Um, you know, high level. In depth, let, let's let's hear. And, and Fab, I don't know if you want to add to that question. If, if yeah, I mean, the question interests me because in the past life, I I worked at a small kind of financial firm, and we targeted high net worth individuals overseas. And so I know it's a difficult audience to reach. You know, they're not necessarily your typical cons consumer. So definitely interested in hearing how how you go about it. You want me to grab this one, James? You want to grab? Yeah, it? sure. Yeah. Uh, I will say, I think, truthfully, we've been very fortunate um, in, in, in this business that we've been able to grow this extremely organically so far without having to invest a ton of money in like online marketing and stuff like that, which, you know, for a new company, that's that's a lot, right? That's a huge investment, a lot of dollars you got to throw at that stuff uh, for, for not necessarily great returns. But we've been very fortunate to have developed, you know, great relationships in the industry with our partners, who are our suppliers, you know, and, and over time, just people that we've dealt with, you know, in in, in our other business, um, that it's grown organically in the sense that we haven't had to reach out to many people, if at all. It's been a lot of what are you doing now? Um, oh, you're doing this. Can you help me with this? I have this trip planned. Uh, so it really has grown organically. Um, you know, and we're, listen, we're, we're very transparent. We try to do everything above board, um, and we're, and we're full disclosure to all our clients. You know, I'm no longer with the company I used to work for. Um, but I'm doing this now, if you're asking, and, and then that's led to a lot of great conversations, a lot of great, um, referrals and a lot of business. So we haven't had to go out and actually, 
I, I, truly, it, it's, it surprises us when we actually think back <laughs> and look at it, how successful we've been able to be so far without having to go and throw a lot of money at marketing and, and that. And, and I think that speaks to relationships. Yes, yeah, so fair to say that it's been built on your reputation. It's 100%. Been on the reputation that you, uh, you and your, all three of you, all four of you, have built as a team. 100%. So that you're saying, hey, what are you guys up to? Uh, would you say that let's say you know Fab and I tomorrow said, hey, we want to start a, um, we want to start a a, a high end villa uh, rental company. Like, so for a total stranger or someone who's strange to the business, we, we would do- buy you out right away. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Fab, let's do it. We got a buyer. Let's do it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be? Do you think that 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 factor of recognition, that factor of reputation, would almost make it prohibitive for anyone else getting into this this uh, field now? Is it one of those businesses where your reputation is really the, the strength and the crux of what's gotten you here? Absolutely. Like piggybacking off of what Wade just said, um, we've done literally virtually we haven't done really that much market spend uh in 2021 yet we achieved any of the personal targets that we 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 set forth last year and if you think about it when you're investing this much money like really the minimum spend uh for for a lot of these for a lot of these clients in US dollars it's at least 20,000 20 to 25,000 that's just for the accommodation so when you're talking about that much money and you're working in a business where it's it's really surrounded you're surrounded by people whether it's your clients or the homeowners that we're working with or the property managers people it, it's all about the trust nobody's going to want to put 20 30 40 thousand dollars in the hands of somebody they just don't trust at the end of the day it really doesn't matter what company they're affiliated with if they know that you've been looking out for them for the past five years, 10 years, in our case, 15 to 20 years, they know that you're no matter where you go, you'll always look out for them. We could have easily have left our previous employer gone with a competitor if we wanted, and they would they would, they would have followed us. So, um, it, so I was going to say, the, the people that they're dealing with are Sheldon James, and I don't know your wife's names, but... Um, and both Angela. Of yeah, Angela and Chelsea, yeah. Angela and Chelsea. Oh, so just, just to shed light on that too, Paul people are probably wondering Sheldon James is James obviously is James's name Sheldon is my middle name that that's it's not well and I realized from the logo that it looks good together <laughs> yeah well Wade, Wade James doesn't sound as sexy sounds more like a a law firm of some sort <laughs> and um so which brings me to my next question and this is this is very interesting to me and this is where I and I don't know if how I don't know how chill you guys are. If it's just well, it'll grow the way it grows, or do you guys set yourself very specific goals and objectives on growth, on recurrence, on on on, on various things? I don't know if you have a product that you're thinking of. Like, how, how do you set those goals and objectives, and how does that look? Have you been achieving them? Like, particularly with the crazy pandemic. Yeah, I mean, naturally, with we, we had to set ourselves some targets, whether it was monetary or even little projects that we wanted, like we, to to be able to get off the ground, and we were able to achieve those. At the same time, our our mantra has really been, you know, putting the client first. So, a lot of what we're doing is trying to surround things just to make sure that the client experience does come first. But at the same time, it is a business. This is we 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 need to make sure this is success, successful, so we can survive. So we have also set out some 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 targets and seeing how how well we 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 were able to do in uh, the past year and a half. Well, now we realize okay, we can now start focusing on some more not rigid targets, but a little bit more some meaty targets, um, mm-hmm. if you if you want to call it that, Wade. <clears throat> and yeah, Fab, I don't know if you're. Oh, Fab, I don't know if you're getting the same thing as I'm getting in my head, but I'm thinking if you guys are are building mostly on your reputation to achieve those next goals, are you going to need to do advertising? Are you going to need to get out there? Are you going to need to do a referral program? Like, what? 
how, how does that look in, in setting those targets or making those goals achieve? Or are you guys just saying, no, we're happy with this level and we're just going to keep going in that same direction? Well, I think it, I think it's, it's a good question. I think it's a combination of, of, of two things. One, uh, like I said before, right, it's been growing really well organically and consistently increasing um, in terms of how much business we're, we've, we've been doing. And the trend, obviously, like any business, you want to grow. You don't want to stay st stagnant. You don't want to just be, you know, we're, we're happy making X and let's just keep making X for the rest of our lives. We, we obviously, you know, are ambitious individuals. We're still young enough that we have time in our lives to, to, to hopefully make a lot of money and, and grow a brand that, that we can be very proud of. Um, and that, so those are goals. Those are targets for sure. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think, yes, to answer your question, we do have to at some point get into doing some marketing and doing some, some building awareness outside of just referrals and outside of just, you know, the people that already know us, that's a part of it, right? That's a part of growing it. But I, I think so far anyways, what's been most important to us, and we've been pretty consistent about this from the get-go is kind of holding ourselves accountable to what we want to do and where we want to take it and why we got into this business. Right. Mm -hmm. what, you know, we didn't mention this earlier, but quite frankly, when we decided to start this, one of the questions we asked ourselves was, do we want to turn this into a company that we're then going to turn around and sell to some massive, you know, Google or Facebook or whoever for billions of dollars and, and you know, have it go, pro go public and blah, blah, blah. Do we want to build a business business or do we want to build a lifestyle business, which is, you know, we want to be successful and love what we do and be able to support our families and live the lifestyle that we want to live through this business. Mm -hmm. That was a question we had to ask ourselves. Uh, and, and we chose the latter, right? It, sure. It'd be nice if, if, if this gets to a point where, you know, Google, Google comes knocking and says, we want to start Google luxury travel and we want Sheldon James to, we want to buy you out to do that. I mean, yeah, sure. who wouldn't want that, but sure. that's not the goal. The goal for us is to be able to build this business, uh, knock on wood, the way we have been able to so far successfully and, and support the lifestyles we want to lead for ourselves and our families. And again, hold ourselves accountable to being proud of what we're doing and to feel like we're delivering on, on the objectives and the goals that we've set, which to James's point are primarily set around the client experience. Because I feel like if you do that right and you mm -hmm. nail that client experience every time, you're good. And there's going to be bumps. There's going to be issues. You can't make everyone happy 100% of the right. time. It's one thing we've learned over the yeah. years is no matter how hard you try, some people just aren't going to be happy. And that's right. going to happen. But if we keep the focus on that being our main objective, I feel like the financial side and the success side is going to follow that. And, and truthfully, from a sales perspective, James and I have a very similar style in that sense, where it's not just about how much money can I make on any given deal. You know, money is important, like you said, but the focus really always, even in our previous life, you know, I can give examples where both of us have taking a lower deal and, and advise someone to take a, a lower deal or, or a less expensive property because we knew you're going to love that property way more than the one you're looking at, which is, you know, $50,000 more for the week. Mm. Save the $50,000, take that trip. And I promise you, you're going to love it. And, and it's that long vision of like service them right from the get go and they'll come back. Right. Don't make it about getting the most money out of them on every deal. Make it about, What's the best thing that I can provide you in, with this vacation? And if you do that right and you nail that, you're good. Five, uh, there's a question. Uh, go ask a question, but there's one I have to ask before we end. No, no, that was amazing. <laughs> no, 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 that was a great, great answer. I love, uh, awesome. I love that, and <laughs> and I love because it doesn't sound scalable. But at the end of the day, it's doing the things that aren't scalable that that help you build your your business and the solid foundation. So, so I love sorry that. to interrupt Fab, but I'm, I'm so glad you just said that, that word scalability. Yeah. Um, part of the, another, another, you know, reason why we got into this business is because we we found that this specific industry and this level of client needs more personalization, handheld, you know, time spent, less transactional, more personalized. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about scalability, I think it's very difficult, if not impossible, to scale that, mm. right? 
it, it, they're just, there's only so many hours in a day. There's only so much time you can spend with someone. There's only so much you can do. Scalability is important, but it is 100% not the basis of what we're building on. Mm. We're really building on an experience one by one. And, and we truly believe it'll get there if we do that right. And so far, knock on wood, early days, you know, I'm not getting cocky here. It's worked. It's, it's, it's proving it. We're proving ourselves right by doing it, right? So it's not a transactional yeah. business. And we felt that this business cannot be handled on a transactional level. It's got to be handled more on a personal level and relationship driven. And that's the goal of this business and, and what we sort of built everything around. Uh, we would call it consultative, right? So yeah. interesting because in, you're right. In the travel business, a lot of, at a certain level, a lot of stuff is being treated in a very transactional way, right? Best cost, best price. Um, and what you're really saying is I get to know the clients. I get to know what they need. I ask them the right questions. I love it. You ask them the right questions to find out what it is that they really need. Am I wrong in saying that the only way to really scale this would be to bring on people that would learn from you who would do what you do? So say, okay, well, we've got uh, Sheldon, James, um, Angela, and Chelsea. 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 And they're all good at what they do. And the only way to scale this is to say, okay, we'll bring on George. Uh, we'll teach George how to do the business. He'll mirror us. And then in a year, he's going to build his clientele. And then he'll be another member. So that, but it's still what you're saying is that real experience is that we're going to find out, Mr. and Mrs. Client, what you really need. So that when, when we talk to you the next year, we remember last year's vacation, what you did, what you liked, what you didn't like, how, how you got there, the cook, the chef, the kind of food you wanted kind of experience you wanted and we have that in our, our, our data bank and we we know what you're what you're looking for uh and and we can bring it to you so 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 that's that's really that's interesting yeah because i we're, we're going to cut to a point at some point um you know we're starting to feel that a little bit where you know some of the volume that's going to be coming in uh you know right now it's just it's too long sale at some point we're going to get to it to handle that it, to make sure, because we do spend a lot of our, lot of time with with each of our leads or each of our, our clients. Um, mm -hmm. So at some point, yeah, we will have to look into potentially bringing bring additional people in. But what's one of the things that the four of us share? It's that we do all share the same values, um, right. which we have since the get go. That's why we started this together. It's not not often you come across with a company built uh, that's been built with four co, co founders, but that's the case with us because we all share the exact same values. So if we do ever decide to, you know, expand and, and bring more, more in, we also want to make sure that they also will share the same values. So exactly to what you just said, Paul, want to make sure, yeah, maybe they'll watch us or maybe it's those who we worked, worked with in the past who, you know, we, we, we find uh, we worked well together with. So uh, definitely, definitely there's plenty of opportunities for that uh, in the future. Interesting. Like it, it's, it's a sales job, right? I was gonna say it's a sales job, right? Yeah. But I, I don't think James and I are salespeople. You know, I I don't think of us as what you would stereotypically think when you think of a salesperson. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there's one extreme, you know, the used car salesman. That's certainly not us. <laughs> uh, you know, but I think in general, I don't think of us as salespeople. I, I like the word you use, consulted, consultative, consultative. Yeah. Consultative. <laughs> I, I feel, uh, you know, I feel our goal is always to be that for a client, someone that they trust that when they think of where am I going to go next, they think of, I got a guy. Mm. Talk to my guy. They talk to their friends. Talk to, talk to my guy. He's not going to sell you. He's going to tell you what you need and you can trust him. Right. Well, I, I you know, Fab and I have had this discussion too. That I think the best salespeople um, are those that understand the needs of their clients. And right. yes, you are selling something that is fulfilling a need that they have. Okay, Fab, you had a question, I think? No, I'm good. That's it. Okay, so I have a, a question for you. Um, and what what is for both? I want you both to answer this if it's not the same. If it's the same, one of you can answer. What does success mean to you? I know it's a very broad question, but for the business and obviously for you personally, what does success mean to you? Well, let you start it up. Sure. Uh, I think I touched on that actually just just before. Uh, for us, success or for me, 
success, uh, which again, touching on James, James's point about us having similar values. For us, success is about building something we can be proud of, like I said, um, as a brand and being able to support our families and live the lifestyle that we, we want to live. And to get there, we have to make sure our clients are getting exactly what they want and more. Um, so that's, that's success for me is making, you know, because we have those goals and we have, we have been and continue to hold ourselves accountable, that's going to make us successful. And, and it's going to mean we're going to be able to grow this business and be proud of it and, and trust in it and, and not feel like we're cutting corners and make enough money to be able to support our families and the lifestyles we want to live. That's, that's success for me. Sounds good. James, is it the same for you? Um, very, very similar, actually. Um, it's also to uh, work less and make more money. But I guess that's uh, anybody's uh, goal in life. Um, but I, as I also mentioned earlier on, like our names are attached to this. So whenever, again, we don't need to be like an Expedia. We don't need to be like a, um, like a, a VRBO, like somebody that's out there. But when somebody does mention our name, Sheldon James, Sheldon James Villas, we do always want to be associated with positivity. Mm -hmm. So we either want our clients to be like, oh, you know what? You need something? Go check with uh, Sheldon James. Oh, you know what? Uh, SJ helped me uh, a couple years back. Give them a call. Stuff like that. Um, we, we, we want people to associate us with a positive experience. Um, and, and through that, we know that we will, we will be rewarded. We will be compensated well. Um, and then, yeah, at the end of the day, it's really to be able to, to work, but still put focus on our family at the end of the day, provide for them and, and, and just be happy and do, the, do the occasional podcast like this uh, every now and then. <laughs> I, I do have one more question and it's interesting because obviously you guys, we've talked a lot about your clients, right? So I, and I understand your clients, but what about your suppliers? What about that owner of a, of a villa, of a high-end villa? What about that private jet company? Like, what is, it, what is it that you offer them that makes them say, hey, I'd rather deal with Sheldon and James than, you know, whoever else? Yeah, I think, you know, I think the hard balance to strike in this industry uh, that a lot of larger companies, I think, struggle to do simply by virtue of the fact that they're, they're so huge, it's hard to do, to do that. But the hard balance to strike is that balance between doing what's right for the client, because that's your client driven, your client focused, without compromising what's also right for the supplier, right? Right. Um, and that's something that we have always done in our, in our previous life and continue to do now, which I think is why a lot of our partners want to work with us is because they know we're not just looking to get a booking and throw it in their house, even though we know it might be like a bad client for the house. They're going to throw a raging party and they're going to trash. You know what I mean? We're trying to vet that a little bit. And, and they know that that's important to us as well. They know that it's important to us and, and it's vital to our success that they trust us just as much as our clients trust us. You know, whether it's an individual homeowner who's trusting us with his 20, 30, $40 million home, or it's a supplier that manages it, you know, a portfolio of homes uh, for individual owners. Again, going back to what James says, we want people to think of Sheldon James or SJ with positivity in mind. Mm -hmm. So when they're signing a new owner, the ideal scenario is they get to a point where, you know, a supplier is like, I'm bringing on new owners and they heard that we work with SJ. They want to work with us because of that. Yeah right? Developing that trust and that relationship because they know that we're bringing good clients and good doesn't just mean high spenders. Right. Good means people that are respectful, that understand the business. And they know that it, when stuff goes wrong, which inevitably it does, even the best clients sometimes break stuff, make mistakes, get a little too overzealous and whatever, that we're not just going to be like, oh, too bad. Sorry. Hmm. You know, yeah. we're there. We're going to mitigate that for them. We're going to work with them between the clients and them to, to come to the solution. Uh, and that's, that's a very important, that's vital to our business, just as vital, I would say, as the client side. So, and we put a heavy focus on that. And all the suppliers we work with know that about us. And, and frankly, we've always been that way, even in our own job, which I think is one of the things that set us apart. Uh, 
is that we're not just in it for the bottom line dollars and cents. We want the long-term relationship and that trust. And that has maybe it's maybe taken a bit longer to, to reach a certain level of success. But I think once you once you've done that, you put in that time and you reach that level, it's gonna grow leaps and bounds from there way quicker than the person that's just selling, 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 selling. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, uh, Fab, any other questions? I think you know we we we've, we've covered uh, a lot. Yeah, we've covered good a stuff lot. in there. Yeah, very good stuff. Is there anything else? Uh, closing comments. Anything else you guys want to add that you want our listeners to know? I do want to ask one question. Oh, yes. Fab, is that a Kramer or a Jackson guitar behind you on the wall? It's a Jackson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's wondering. Good eye. Good eye. I see the headstock. It's got to yeah. be one of the two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a it's an intro guitar, but it's a Jackson. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Wade, maybe Wade, Wade is the weight of all trades over here. He does do a lot. So <laughs> no, and we would just say, I mean, listen. Um, I don't know if you've mentioned our website. It's uh, sheldonjamesvillas.com. Um, and obviously, if ever you know any of your listeners are ever in a market looking to travel somewhere. Uh, down in the tropics in Europe or somewhere, you know, by all means, check out our website or even uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, this has definitely been fun on my part and, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys got a little bit, uh, you and your listeners got something out of it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Thank you very much guys. We really appreciate it. It was, it was interesting. It's, it's, um, well for me, I don't know about you, Fab, but it's something I knew nothing about. Um, so it, it's a very interesting business. And, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, you know, I, I'm amazed, um, at the fact that this is not more popular in even regular kind of, you know, regular vacations, because I think, you know, as an individual, when you're going to look somewhere, you know, even if you're not, you know, extremely wealthy, you, you would probably still benefit from, you know, speaking to people like you, but I guess the, the numbers just aren't there, right? If, if right. you know, it has to make sense. So, but it's uh, fascinating and, and thanks so much. Um, maybe if Fab and I do really well this year, we'll be able to be afford to be one of your customers. <laughs> there you go. Well, that, that's that's, that's, that's the goal for this year. <laughs> so that website again, sheldonjamesvillas.com. That's Thank right. You guys. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Paul. Bye.